Yep, so we're gonna be going through a bridge block today, feet up bench. So this is the heavier day in the bridge block uh, for week one, uh, day three. So the bridge block alternates, it's a you know, heavy day, lighter day, heavy day, lighter day. And then the next week that flips where day one, which was heavy week one is now lighter week two, and then vice versa and so on and so forth through the weeks. So I think sweet spot of the bridge block, four days a week for a six week block. I, that's how I originally wrote this program back in like 2013, end of 2013 or early 2014. Uh, when I started using it for myself and then for athletes I coach, I used to run these six week powerlifting off season programs where we'd have like a little private Facebook group and there'd be 10, 15 people doing the bridge all together and we'd just kind of coach them through that. So this has been a long staple of mine and juggernaut training. Uh, I've used it really successfully. Marissa has used it really su successfully. And so today I want to show you how you can get the most out of your bridge block. Step back, you dancing kind of close. Yeah, Shorty, Shorty got next too close stuck in my head. And now we're remin reminiscing over, you know, having boners at inappropriate times in high school. So you just tuck it up in the waistband. I'm gonna use bumpers today so it looks more impressive. So also when you're doing the bridge block, if you don't have a max entered, so if it's not showing you an actual weight to use, enter a max. There's a lot of variations that the system can predict for you based off of other data we have, but some of them it's just too wide a variance or we just don't have enough for that specific exercise. So like feet up bench, let's see what I got as my max in there. Also quick, how you, how you would change this. Press the I, that's opening up this page. Max is in the settings. So I've got it in as 170 kilos, uh, I don't, no offhand if I put that in there or if it generated that off of my 215 that I did at the uh, garage gym comp. But you want it to say a number there. And this, uh, this week of the bridge block, that'll be 70%. And you're certainly welcome to use the guided warm up feature in this uh, though, yeah, that's a new feature and I hadn't really considered it within the context of a bridge block because I don't want you to change your weight from the listed weight. So I'll have to sort that out with Tim, what we wanna do with that. But if you need help on how you should properly warm up, it's there for you. Just don't change off of the target target weight. So the fire and the poop emojis don't really come into play for the, for the bridge because even if I felt the best I've ever felt or the worst I've ever felt, I'm doing 120 kilos today no matter what. It just might be as a bunch of sets of three instead of sets of five and six. So that's why it, it wouldn't be appropriate to change the weight because you're gonna change the sets around how you, or change the number of reps around how you feel. Well, I'm big on the sound effects. Get a said it adds, adds to the drama. Like if someone was to not see how much weight is on the bar and only hear the audio, then uh, they might think I'm lifting pretty heavy. Or, you know, someone's watching it on their phone with the sound on and, and like, you know, their wife is around the corner or, or something and they just hear those sounds of grunting coming from their phone. You know, that can lead to a fun conversation. All right, so this is the, the real sets here, 120 kilos. So I got 27 total reps. Now it's all sets of three to six reps with 90 second rest periods. So yes, would it be possible to go in thinking, all right, I'm gonna do 27 reps as four sets of six and then one set of three, like the quickest way to get it done? Sure, but to get the most out of a bridge block, you don't wanna approach it that way. You want to treat each set individually and only focus on having the greatest intent possible. So moving the bar as explosively as possible with your best technique. So that could mean that you do four reps and on the fifth rep, the bar starts to slow down some, your technique falters, then you want to rack it. Even if you could have done another rep, you know, a sixth rep, the most that is permissible in this idea, don't necessarily want to, nor should you necessarily. So you want to only do great reps. So if that ends, if that means that your sets end up being, you know, five, four, five, five, three, 
to get to 27, that's totally fine. You wanna do every one of those 27 reps as well as you possibly can. Between all the grunting and the talk about next too close and tucking burners up in the waistband, this has been a pretty sexual workout so far. <clears throat> And you put it in, 120 times six. RPE, honestly, and the bridge is kind of irrelevant. Make sure this auto timer is on. And now it's already timing my 90 second rest period. 30, 30 seconds, seconds remaining. Three. That's meta right there. I think that's what filmmakers would call that. The stern taskmaster inside this with his rest periods. Yes, fine, Chadbot, I'll get back to work. So bridge block has always been particularly beneficial to me in my bench press. If you're doing four days a week, you're gonna bench four days a week. And two of the sessions are really light. Even this session, 120 kilos for sets of six. It's not hard for me to do sets of six here. I could be doing you know, sets of 10, maybe sets of 12, but it's the intent that I'm able to put into every rep and you have to make yourself do that. You can't let yourself coast through those six reps. You gotta press them as explosively as possible. That the first time I benched, 510, 515, and 520, uh, all gym PRs for me at the time, were at the end of a bridge block. Like in week five or six, the last heavy bench day, whatever it was, I would go up and do a max and then do the reps after. And I was hitting those weights after not touching anything more than 70, 75% in the previous uh, couple of weeks from that. <laughs> So the way this stuff's moving, you know, I went six, six, five on that last set. I have 10 reps left, so I'll probably just do it. End up doing that as two sets of five. But again, it doesn't have to be split up nice and even like that. If this wasn't moving this way for me, it could have been you know, just doing five reps in those first couple sets. And maybe as you get warmed up more, then you do six. Or your technique's not stable and you end up doing you know, three or four, more fatigue, whatever. Don't be locked into, I have to get these reps done in the fewest number of sets possible. Right now on the feet up bench press, these 90 second rest periods are feeling leisurely, Parisian rest periods. About 15 minutes from now when I'm doing deadlifts, they're gonna feel a bit more grueling, I think. 10 seconds remaining. Five reps left. Genuine in those jeans. That was a good one. In those jeans. Is there any more room for me? Yeah. The early 2000s freaking that was allowed at high school dances. I know they sure as shit do not allow that now. Thong song, I mean a classic. Yeah. <laughs> Feet up bench, complete. All right, so now we're going on comp deadlift, 21 reps at 210 kilos. Same idea, three to six reps per set, 90 second rest periods. Let me reiterate, only quality reps. So if I end up doing these 21 reps as seven sets of three, that would be like the minimum uh, reps per set that you wanna do. It's 70%, so you should be able to do sets of three no matter how fatigued you are, but that wants to be the minimum that we do. Maybe I feel great today, and every rep is flying, and I end up doing you know, six, six, five, four. Uh, I don't really foresee that, because my legs are quite sore from Wednesday's uh, squatting, but we'll just see how, see how things go. So there'll be another video uh, on the channel here where I'm talking about my back pain stuff. 
I remember sliding that weight on reminded me of a time before my initial herniated discs or before I knew that they were herniated. This probably could have been an indication that there was something wrong was uh, doing strongman, doing powerlifting and my deadlift was going really well. I think I pulled 835 with straps, but in those training leading up to that time, my back would be so stiff and so pumped during these deadlift workouts that when I was putting a plate on like that, where I'd have to go down on my knees to slide the plate on because I didn't want to bend over to do it because my back was so pumped, that probably should have been an indication something was not ideal. <laughs> All right, so 210, 462 for 21 reps. So this is 70%, 90 seconds rest between sets. Only good reps. High intent, always only the good ones. Those deadlift rest periods seem the clock seems to be moving faster than it was on the bench press. Sprinkled some. Do you guys pee in the deadlift? Male Is urinary pee? incontinence is not a joke. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you guys? Do you guys pee your days shit themselves? Yeah, probably more shit or vomit or something. Mm. You never ever shit yourself, do mm, Not enough to admit to. <laughs> That was a fart, not a <laughs> shit, okay? A fart? I didn't even hear anything, so you shouldn't have been a <laughs> Well, you shouldn't have been a anything. It was a fart, not a shit. <laughs> Deadlifts complete. If you can hear me over my heavy breathing. So there we go. 210, four, 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 five. All quality, great intent type of reps. Now I'm gonna take the weights off all by myself. Because Marissa. <laughs> I can't, I got these really sharp nails. Oh, those are nice. They're good for back scratching, so I don't want you to mess those up. So yeah, the, those deadlifts, they felt better than I was expecting them to. Really, because Wednesday's squat workout is a 175 for 30 reps, one minute rest between sets. So I did five sets of six, no belt or anything, and it was, legs were pumped. And then trained jujitsu later that evening and came home to some mighty, mighty hamstring cramps. Uh, yeah, so I was a little nervous for that with this deadlift workout, but all felt good. So let's do some little accessory work because I always do my accessories. I never skip them. All right, so that was a look inside of my bridge block training week one, day three. Main takeaway is to get the most out of your bridge block is put a max in so it's giving you specific weights to do. Even if you have to estimate, it'll be close enough. Then intent is key, only quality reps. 
So when you see 21 reps, like it was for me in the deadlift today, that does not mean you have to do it in as few sets as possible. You wanna only do great reps for all 21. So maybe that means you do three reps and the fourth rep starts to slow down, your technique starts to falter, rack it, stop the set, take your rest period, move on to the next one, keep the intent and quality high as possible on all the reps. Accessory work, part of stuff, you know, don't have to go crazy. Uh, or anything, just go in, get a pump, move quick from exercise to exercise. Goals of the bridge block, increasing work capacity, breaking up adaptive resistance. So variety is, you know, on purpose, not doing the competition variations very much, especially if you've coming off a long powerlifting training block, you don't need to do, you know, all comp varieties all the time. We want you to do more variation there. That's gonna break up adaptive resistance. Uh, when you get stuff like unilateral training and that kind of things, put a little bit more emphasis towards that. That's going to help you stay healthy in the long run. Be athletic with the jumps and the carries and all that kind of stuff. And just have fun. The bridge block is a time to do some things that you normally wouldn't do uh, as you get closer to a powerlifting meet. So if you want to focus on you know, front squat and military press or overhead press as your main movements, and, and your opposite stance deadlift, or you know, for my massonomics friends out there, maybe a Jefferson deadlift, who knows? Uh, you can throw that in as your, as your main movement and you know, get some quality work in on that. So take that advice, do the bridge block again, sweet spot, four days a week for a six week bridge. That's how I originally wrote it back in 2013, 2014. It served me and a lot of juggernaut athletes very well since then. Thanks for watching. Check out the app. Try it for two weeks free at juggernautai.app. Link down below, link up above, link everywhere. We are everywhere all the time. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.